If you turn to the book of Daniel tonight, Daniel chapter 9, I'm going to ask everybody that would turn with me as we see some valuable information about praying for your own country. Daniel chapter 9, we'll give you a moment and as we find our place, if we could, I'd like to ask you to stand tonight. As we do honor and reverence the Word of God. Daniel chapter 9. We'll begin reading in verse 3. I don't want to get ahead of you. Daniel chapter 9. And begin reading in verse 3. And here's what he said. If you've not found your place, listen as we read. Beginning... Verse 3 of chapter 9. Daniel says, And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them, that love Him and to them, that keep His commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts uh, and from thy judgments. Uh, neither have we hearkened uh, unto thy servants the prophets uh, which spake in thy name to our kings, uh, our princes, uh, and our fathers, uh, and all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us... Uh, confusion of faces uh, as at this day to the men of Judah to the inhabitants uh, of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and they are afar off, that are far off through all the countries uh, whether thou hast driven them because of their trespass uh, have they trespassed uh, against thee uh, O Lord uh, to us belongeth confusion of face to our kings, to our princes, to our fathers, because we have sinned uh, against thee. Uh, Daniel did not try to lay the blame uh, off on somebody else. Uh, he said we're responsible. Uh, let me tell you church tonight uh, we blame Nancy Pelosi and bless God she needs to be blamed for Saul. And then we blame uh, uh, Joe Biden uh, and yes sir he needs to share some of the blame. This is not politics. Uh, you call this truth. Uh, but let me say we have got to get to the point to realize uh, that we uh, as God's people are responsible because we've allowed this mess to come in our nation and we've allowed every kind of ungodliness uh, and filth imaginable and it's time that God's people mean right. business with God and as I said earlier tonight if there's ever been a time uh, that we need to pray for America, that day's on your doorstep. Right. Let's look a little bit at praying uh, for our country, or as we'll just say, praying for America. Let's pray, and after a prayer, you may be seated. Uh, uh, Father God, tonight, I thank you, Lord, for the privilege uh, of being in your house uh, on a Wednesday evening. Uh, I ask God that you to bless uh, every man uh, and every woman uh, I submitted to the church house tonight. I ask you, God, to go back to the back uh, where those kids are uh, in that Discovery Bible 
yoke uh, also with the toddlers uh, in their ministry uh, in the nursery uh, and back there God with those teenagers uh, uh, facing all kinds uh, of peer pressure uh, uh, but for the next little bit I ask God that you might unleash uh, the Holy Ghost of God on this crowd uh, the adults, the parents uh, and the grandparents uh, of this church uh, and Lord let us I pray get a burden uh, to pray uh, uh, for America have your will and way uh, Father we just pray uh, and we ask it now make these verses uh, uh, come alive to us uh, let us see tonight the confession uh, let us see the confusion uh, and God let us see uh, uh, the conditions uh, uh, that we need uh, to have our prayers answered uh, speak to us tonight Father we pray it, uh, and we ask it now in Jesus uh, in Jesus uh, mighty name uh, that we pray uh, and all God's people that are not ashamed uh, and not afraid uh, say tonight with me God bless America God bless America Amen and Amen thank you tonight and you may be seated let me begin by reminding you yet one more time that the first Thursday of May every year for many years now has been the national day of prayer I want everybody to hear me I believe every day ought to be a day of prayer it doesn't have to be one day matter of fact if you only pray one day a year you might as well rest that day too uh, cause your prayers not getting any higher than your eyebrows uh, if you pray one day a year would somebody say something hey let me tell you I think it's good uh, that while every day uh, ought to be a day of prayer I do think it's good that we have a nationwide day uh, set up uh, to honor the fact that we believe uh, in the power of God and the power of prayer. Hey, we're going to be up here at the Anderson Courthouse praying. I, I understand in Greenville, I, they'll be praying. I, I understand all over this country, I, Texas, Arkansas, I, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, all the way. And believe it or not, there's probably going to be two of them praying in California. Good. Good. Somebody say amen. amen. Maybe two of them. No, there's some Christians out there. And look, we need to be bombarding the gates of heaven. Let me tell you, we're living in a country that is just about an atheistic country. Right. We're living right now in a land that spat in the face of God. Amen. We got a land right now tonight that does not understand uh, the principles and uh, his his word and that's the very reason hey I want you to hear me tonight and don't get mad at me but the truth is the truth is the truth I believe that America maybe I didn't say it was maybe under the curse of God yeah. man when you look at the mess that we're in I mean people ride but drive by shootings and all the murders and the rape and the robberies and you look out here all over the nation uh, our, our, our own government has put its stamp approval on two men getting married to one another two women getting married to one another somebody say amen, amen. and all this transgender foolishness trying to say that God has made a mistake uh, no let me tell you God no has never made a mistake in all of eternity past and all of eternity future God will never uh, uh, make a mistake uh, if you're a man uh, bless God be a man uh, if you're a woman bless God be a woman and serve God would somebody say something Amen. we're living in such a mixed up messed up world and the average person looks around and says why you don't have to have a whole lot of brain to know why <laughs> Somebody say amen. They said they had confusion of faces. Man, there's a whole lot of people kind of got confusion. 
Mm, somebody say amen. Amen. I believe D.C. ought to stand for District of Confusion. <laughs> Somebody's paid. Amen. Well, anyway, we find here that Daniel is praying for his country. Yes. Now, if Daniel prayed for his country, we need some people today and tomorrow that will be praying for our country. Let me give you three things. I, I gave a clue a little bit in my prayer. First, we see three things tonight. Number one, in a moment, we'll see the confession. Number two, we'll see the confusion. And then number three, uh, the conditions uh, that need to be met. We're going to get a prayer through. Let's go back and see these things real quick tonight. Number one, look with me first at the confession. Pop up, please, the first verse in the computer. And he says, Speak not thou in thine heart after the Lord has cast thee, uh, hath cast them out from before me, saying, No, that's not well. Okay, my righteousness, the Lord, hath brought me into the possess this land. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord doth drive them out before thee. Can I say to you tonight, wickedness brings the curse of God. Amen. Whether it be this nation or the nation of Israel, notice the last three lines, but for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord doth drive them out before thee. When they went into that land, hey look, the wickedness of God got their attention. Now look, if you would, in verse 4 of our text that we read just a moment ago. Here's what he said. And I prayed, verse 4 of Daniel, and I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession. Somebody give me something. Verse 4, Daniel 9 verse 4. And he confesses up to here it is. I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession. I want everybody to hear me. Before we try to confess somebody else's sin, we got to be confessing our own sin. Right. So the first thing we see, he makes a personal confession. You know, it's one thing to get up and blame this and this and that person and that person when the truth of the matter is every one of us need to make a confession. He said, I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession. Before we going to get a prayer through to God for America, and I hope everybody will be praying for America tomorrow. If you can't make it to the courthouse square, be praying on your job. But if you can, be there. But let me tell you, before you waste your breath uh, and waste your words uh, uh, trying to pray for America, we all first got to make our own uh, personal confession. We got to confess before the Lord that we are also part of the problem. Let me say this is not politics. This is just true. Let me tell you what's wrong with America. For years people voted politics instead of Bible. Talk to me. You let some politician promise you a one and a half percent raise. Huh? Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. You let them offer a one and a half percent raise and people will vote for baby killers and yeah. transgenders. Somebody told to me that. Yeah. And how in the name of heaven can we put one and a half percent ahead of an innocent, precious baby or child? Somebody say amen. Hey. How can we put the homosexual agenda ahead of God's agenda? Yeah. And listen, I hope you not done it, but as a human being and as an American, if you didn't stand up and if you didn't let it be known, we have contributed to the problem. And after that, first they made their confession personally, then they made a national confession. 
Boy, America needs to repent. Could somebody put an amen? Pop up a couple of verses next for me, please. But the end of all things uh, is at hand. How many of you believe that the end is getting pretty close? I don't believe anybody with a brain argued that point. We look at how much worse can things get. She says the end of all things is at hand. So if you believe that, two things. Number one, be ye therefore sober. That means more than the absence of being drunk. Amen. That word sober there means serious. If you really believe we're in the last days, the end times, number one, you got to be sober, which means serious. And number two, you need to pray. Amen. Yep. Mm. Here's why I believe it. Show me 1 John chapter 1. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If I didn't believe that verse right there, why would we pray? Talk to me. How many of you believe the Bible? I'm going to put hold your faith in the fire. If you believe the Bible, and I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but he said, if my people, which are called by my name, he's Christ, his people are called after his name, Christians, uh, if they'd pray and seek his face, turn from their wicked ways, then he says, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin. And listen, listen, listen. Heal their land. I think America is on its deathbed. I believe it's about time to call the family in for America. But I still believe that my God is the great physician. I believe he's the doctor above all up. I believe he's the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the first, the last, the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. He is the Messiah. He is the Redeemer. He is the Savior. And I believe that as long as he's still up there on the throne, there's still hope for America. But not until God's people do what they're supposed to do. He said we got to confess our sins. Cause and you don't have to worry about God doing his part. He is faithful and he is just to forgive us and he will cleanse us. So the first we see here was the confession. Before you go confessing Joe Biden's sin, Come on, and before you go confessing Nancy Pelosi's sin, and before we go confessing those other sins, every one of us got to confess our sin. Because once you confess yours, then you got a right to confess That's right. what's going on as a nation. Would somebody give me an amen? amen. Notice verse 5 now of our text, back to our main text. He says, we have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. You say, Brother Sam, I, I'm not a transgender or I'm not living some immoral lifestyle. Good for you. But if we have departed from the precepts of the Bible, that puts us in a category known as guilty. Amen. Yep. And boy, America has spat Amen. on the Bible. Yep. I've used this little illustration a number of times. Let me do it one more. I remember right up here on the other side of town a few years ago, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the name of this restaurant was called Morrison's. Am I right? And they had a big old food bar. It went along there and they had five or six or eight different meats. And you picked the one you want and you left behind what you didn't like. Amen. Then you get over here to the veggies and you pick all, oh man, they might have had 25 choices. Pick what you like. What you don't like, you leave it to the side. 
and a whole lot of people have taken that same mentality and have applied it to the Bible. Oh, they like that part about heaven. They like that part about grace and mercy and love and forgiveness. But what about those other parts of the Bible that you might not like so much? Matter of fact, when God holds your feet to the fire and it burns a little bit. Y'all still here tonight? Yeah. Somebody wake Troy up over there. <laughs> hey, Troy. Hey, man. Woo! <laughs> to me tonight. Folks, America's in a mess. And the church is over there just goofing off. I believe there's power in prayer. Now listen, if you have... Oh, by the way, talking about prayer, i got to throw this out here. I don't know. I, I mentioned Sunday about... And I didn't name the church, but it was true, so help me with my hand raised to God. They were having drag night. Oh, Lord. Now, I'm not talking about racing. <laughs> I'm not talking about dragsters. They had a drag queen to come to the church. This is true, but you know what? So many people got to praying about that, and so many people got convicted about that. They called that so-called church over there and said, we don't care how many you have, we'll have thousands on the sidewall praying if they show up. And you know what? They canceled drag night. Good. Hey, yeah. God answers prayer. Yeah. When we get that in our head that God answers prayer, and then if we do our part, God will do His, then maybe we'll see something happen in America. Folks, let me say again with my hand raised for God, I, I don't hate anybody. I hate some things I don't like, but don't hate them. That, that drag bunch, I, I, I don't hate them, I promise you. But uh, I, I don't want to round my grandchildren. Uh -oh. Amen. You don't want to round yours? I don't want one of them teaching school. Somebody say amen. So we got to take a stand. It's not that we hate. Oh, the far left and the liberals will say that we're mean spirited. No, we're just trying to uh, show love and offer some protection for our children and our grandchildren to keep the perverts away from them. Now you tell me, is that wrong? No, not a bit. Amen. Show me verse 6 now, please. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings. That would be presidents. Our princes, that would be senators and congressmen. And our fathers, comma, and to all the people of the land. I'm not saying it for because I'm a preacher. I'm nothing. I'm nobody but a sinner saved by grace. Amen. But America hates true preaching. That's why we're in the mess. You check me out. You find somebody that tiptoes through the tulips and, and this kind of <laughs> smiles and uh, you know real sissified acting preacher yet. And I can fill the stadium. But some old leather lung preacher, it's hard to get a crowd. Am I telling the truth? You know why? Because people don't want to hearken to the servants called prophets, or we might even say preachers. They speaking in that in his name to our kings. Hmm. There's probably every president we've ever had has at least known of who the Lord is. That's right. Some acknowledged him, some didn't. And the princes, that's the senators and, and, and the congressmen. I'm glad we got some folks here in our state. I believe they know the Lord. Amen. Somebody give me a name. Oh, and wait a minute. Have you heard the latest? Uh -oh. It looks like the Supreme Court is going to overturn that abortion issue. 
I might not make it legal all over America, but it'll turn it back to the states, and every state uh, can do something about it. I believe it'd be easier to defeat on a local level than it would be on a national level. Hey, our governor's already signed legislation. If you hear a heartbeat, it's a human life, and you can't kill it. Somebody say something. Oh, listen. We have got to learn that. we got to hearken to what's in God's Word. If we don't, we're inviting the judgment of God. i got to hurry if we're going to get out in time to make the National Day of Prayer tomorrow. <laughs> Number one, the confession. Number two, the confusion. Look at verse 7. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces. Look here. <laughs> What's wrong? That's a confused face. You see it every time they have a press Very conference. <laughs> Look at it. He's right. Does the truth offend you? <laughs> He's right. He said, under us it's confused. Let me tell you how confused we are in America. We're confused enough to believe that a human being can marry an animal. Oh my lord. Most of the kids, I guess all the kids are somewhere else tonight. Most of the adult crowd here, but Bible calls that bestiality. It nails it. Some of these nuts up there say that you ought to be able to do whatever you want to do. And if you think you're in love with a dog, <laughs> love your dog. But that's one thing to pat it on the head. I'm talking about another thing. That's how confused America is. We're so confused that we think that we can kill a little baby and it's all right. Hey, look, folks. I got a prayer list up here on this pulpit right now. And I don't know how many people on that prayer list might have some disease tonight. Did you ever think about maybe God sent us somebody that had the cure for diabetes and we aborted it before they got before they became adults. Oh, maybe. Hey, listen, I'm saying this maybe. God sent us somebody with a cure for cancer. Talk to me. And somebody came along and aborted it before they had a chance to get the news out. Somebody say amen. And you think that's all right. Look, when you mention things like this, some people go to fold in their hands. This has nothing, zero to do with politics. I'm just talking about what's in the Bible. Did you know I can show you in the Bible where it says word for word, if a man strive with woman that the fruit of her womb depart from her he shall surely be punished Amen. Amen. I rest my case God said and they, uh, whoever does it doesn't matter if they do have a white coat they're murderer Amen. that's Bible folks that's Bible but look there's so much confusion in America they think that two women can get married to each other. That's all. That's all. And they do. My wife told me the other day. She said, I am done with the Hallmark Channel. And, uh, you know, before in the past, it was just these nice little stories. Somebody moved back to town.